Hey everybody, Kenny here. So before we get going on this video, I just want to give some quick background to catch you up if you have watched any of my act playthroughs. Because there are some minor changes that you're going to see in these three videos. So I'm going to be one of these for my druid, one of these for my necromancer, and one of these for my sorcerer. And the point of these videos are going to be that I'm going to uh, give a rundown of the build that the character is using. And then they're going to head to this specific dungeon here in hopes that there's a boss there. If there's not a boss there, then they'll head to this one here. I mean, like, so, like, the reason I'm starting with the druid is they're the lowest level. So it'll, like, if it's not that one and they go to that one, then at least they'll be at about the same level as the other two. By the time they do this one. But the goal is, you know, to fight the boss. And then... So all of them are going to do it in World Tier 2. Uh, they're going to fight this... Like, whatever boss is here. Once again, if there is no boss here, then they'll do this one. And fight the boss there. In World Tier 2. And the goal will be... Whichever character I had the best time playing as. Doing that specific dungeon... That is the character that I'm going to complete the campaign in. Now, if you watch to the end of my Act 3 playthrough, then you may be wondering why what I'm saying seems different than what I said at the end of that. And that's because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm a big old dum-dum. Because you see, I've never actually used the, the dungeon aspect system to imprint on a weapon. So I had just been assuming that imprinting aspects using the ones you get from dungeons was the same as imprinting aspects like the ones that you extract from the legendaries you find, which isn't the case. Not the case at all. <laughs> With the aspects that you get from the dungeons, you need an additional material that you only get by breaking down other legendaries. So if so uh, if you have if you already have some extras of a certain aspect sitting in you know, your your stash or sitting in your uh, little aspect inventory thing here then you know using the salvage on that item you know like on any extras you have of that will be how you gain these materials here. So Coiling Ward you get from salvaging armor. Obstruse Sigils you get from salvaging jewelry. Baleful Fragments you get from salvaging weapons. And I assume that Sigil Powder uh, comes from... Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe like when you try to imprint or something, like it can fail. And then you'll get this stuff. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I haven't seen this stuff. I'm just, like, I can go by what I'm seeing on the descriptions here. Like, I only had, the only one I have one of is the Coiling Ward, because I had broken down uh, some pair of boots that I had an extra aspect of. That's the only reason I have this one. You know, I have one of those. But, like, uh, in order to get enough of these to be able to craft the sets that I said I was going to make in... My, uh, at the end of my Act 3 uh, playthrough. Yeah, I would need to farm up so many legendaries and, <laughs> and like, and just salvage them all. And that's just, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to put myself through that. Because <laughs> I, I literally, I wasted eight hours collecting all the aspects that I wanted. And just to, uh, just to show everyone what I'm referring to... So the ones that I farmed up were the Aspect of Might from the Dry Steps, the Aspect of the Protector from Fractured Peaks, the Aspect of the Umbral from Dry Steps, the Recharging Aspect from Fractured Peaks, the Mangled Aspect from Fractured Peaks, the Aspect of the Empowering Reaper from Skazglin, the Aspect of the Expectant from Skazglin, the Aspect of Static Kling from Skazglin, the Rapid Aspect from Dry Steps, Aspect of Retaliation from Dry Steps, the Elementalist Aspect from Dry Steps, 
and the Edge Masters aspect from Skarsgård. So my intention was to make a whole, you know, like for each of these characters, make essentially like a full legendary set for all of them, you know, using the aspects that I'd collected. But as I mentioned, like I didn't realize that there was a, an additional material cost when using the ones from your Codex of Power. So that's not going to happen. So instead, I'm just going to, as, as they are, I'm just going to have them run into these dungeons and fight the boss there. And whichever I like <laughs> using the most, that's going to be the character I play as. But before I forget to do it, let me go and upgrade the world tier from a druid back to world tier two. Since they've been on world tier one, uh, since they did their class quest. All right. So my druid is world tier two again. So first I'm going to go over the skill build. Then, well, actually no. First I'll go over... The class features, then I'll go over the skill build, then I'll go over the gear. So in terms of spirit boons, the boons that I'm using for snake, we're using masochistic. So with this, when our shifting skills deal critical damage, you heal for a percentage of our life. In wolf, we're using energize so that we have a lucky hit chance to restore our spirit. We're uh, even though like you're seeing like a stag head here, like we're we've chosen the eagle as our bond. So we, uh, we've invested two here. So we're using the scythe talons for the increased crit chance and swooping attacks for the increased attack speed. Uh, for the stag, we are using prickle skin for the extra thorns. For our skill build, we are using maul with the enhanced maul and wild maul upgrades. We were using the Fierce Maul, but because of the way that I play this character now, uh, Fierce Maul is actually detrimental to our playstyle. Because if we, like, if I choose to use Maul just to uh, gain, uh, you know, just to increase our provocation stacks, like, the range that it can hit an enemy with is crazy. Like you're like like really like you can hit like you one like one swipe of maul, and like you can basically hit like an enemy within, I'd say probably two hundred degrees around your character, like like it's it's way wider than you think it is, like you know I thought that like you know it was gonna be like, you know you have a like a good cone in front of you, when you grab that, but like you know it gets like from behind the druid's shoulder to the other shoulder is like it's like a huge wide arc for when it does that and with provocation the first time you hit when you hit the max stacks you know that's the attack that gets the you know that gets the overpower and you don't want to be wasting your overpower on you don't, you don't want to be wasting your guaranteed overpower on a mall <laughs> so i switched over to the wild mall for the Chance to knock down enemies. I mean, it's not necessary to have this. Like, yeah, I could just uninvest that and put it in somewhere else. But, you know, having an additional way to mitigate isn't a bad idea. So we're using Maul. We're using pulver uh, fully upgraded Pulverize with Enhanced Pulverize and Primal Pulverize. So this way, you know, we are... Any enemy that we hit with our eyes is dealing less damage to us, and we are using our eyes to deal overpower damage every 12 seconds. Fully really upgraded the passives here, so that we have the increased crit chance against close enemies. And a fully upgraded Iron Fur for the damage reduction while in Werebear form. At one point in Debilitating War Roar, and the upgrades that... Give us fortify when we roar and make it that we heal a bit when we roar. Hello. Down in the wrath section, uh, we have one point in trample as well as its upgrade that gets us additional damage against 
enemies that we run over that deals less the further we go. I mean, it's not distance-based, but, you know, like if there's five enemies in front of you, then the fifth enemy would take less damage than the first enemy. Then Natural Trample, which gives us more Fortify when we use it. We're fully invested in Mending, so that any form of healing we receive will be increased. And Provocation, which is the main thing here. So with Provocation, every 20 seconds, as long as we're in, like, uh, while we're in bear form, like we'll start building up Provocation. And once we hit 20, the next thing we use will be overpowered. Guaranteed overpowered damage. And so the way we're using that is we're using our provocation to overpower Hurricane. I was using it to overpower Cataclysm, which was really cool. But Hurricane is just far more dependable as a melee character. Because when, when I was using Cataclysm, you would... Set it off, then, you know, like maybe a lightning strike would hit the, you know, the enemy you're fighting. Maybe it would just go and strike at some, like a, some corner in the room. Maybe the tornadoes would go and fly off in some random direction. You know, there, like there wasn't any way to guarantee that all the stuff that happens during Cataclysm will hit the enemy during your, your provocation. And what makes provocation so powerful with something like Cataclysm or Hurricane, is that since like, these uh, hit in a duration, so for the full duration, so for 8 seconds with Hurricane and for 8 seconds with Cataclysm, you know, they will deal damage for that duration. And if you have full provocation when you start them, then every single hit during that duration will be overpowered. You'll get an overpower for every single one of those. So for 8 seconds, you're just dealing overpower damage along with anything else you're doing because you know, this is just something that you're doing kind of passively as you're using your other stuff. Like, you, know, like you, you trigger it and then you know, like you're mauling, you're pulverizing, you're trampling. You know, like, it, like this is just set up so that like, you, know, like you have this sudden huge burst of extra damage that you're dealing while you have all of your stacks up. Then down in the ultimate tier, uh, we have our Grizzly Rage, which gets us our unstoppable upgrade so that, you know, we have a way that if we, you know, are in a bad situation, that we can pop this and get out of there. Uh, along with Supreme Grizzly Rage, which makes it that we start Accruing Fortify just passively while that's on. And we got all of the passives over here. Well, not all of the passives, but we've invested, fully invested in these two passives here. Uh, the Defensive Posture, which increases the amount of Fortify we gain from all sources. And Nature's Resolve, which makes it that any time we take any damage, we Fortify for a certain amount of our life. And our key passive is Ursine Strength, which increases our damage dealt while we're healthy. And also gives us additional health when we're in werebear form. Yeah, so the goal is to essentially always be in werebear form and then occasionally set off a hurricane and get lots of good damage going that way. Uh, the gear we're running here, uh, we're using a hat that has life regen on it as well as some berry generation that doesn't do anything for us, but it also increases our healing received. Our chest has lots of nice damage reduction on it, so it has just all-around damage reduction, as well as damage reduction while we're fortified. Our gloves give us increased ore power damage, increased crit chance. Intelligence doesn't do anything for us, but you know, the others are very good to have. Now, our pants here give us more life regen, more damage reduction from close enemies. I put on some emerald so that I have some thorns on here. We have boots with an increased max evade charge, increased movement speed, and some more willpower. We have this ring here that gives us some increased max spirit, more life regen, and I put in a diamond to give us some extra resistance to all elements, which uh, this, this was done before I realized that resistances are essentially worthless in this game. 
Uh, the ring we're using is actually a perfect ring for us because this gives us that mangled upgrade that we actually ran a dungeon to get the aspect for. So I didn't need, so I have, I just happened to have this, but I didn't need to craft anything, you know, craft that onto anything. Not that I could have if I wanted to, but it's very nice to have this. Uh, it gives us additional overpower damage, increased fortify generation, increased life regen. And when we're struck as a werebear, we have a chance to increase our, uh, to gain spirit. On our amulet, we are using a choker of retaliation, which this is another one that we actually ran dungeons in order to get this aspect, but it wasn't necessary because it happened to have this already on this amulet here. Now, which I, I imprinted this from, you know, I happened to have a, you know, an aspect, you know, that particular aspect happened to have it on something else. And then I put it on this amulet, but the amulet itself increases damage reduction from distant enemies, gives us a increased shrine buff duration, gives us a cooldown reduction and the aspect makes it that our core skill, our core skills deal increased damage based on the amount of fortify we have. And then our weapon here, uh, we're using this corpse cudgel, which is a two handed mace that has a nice amount of implicit overpower damage, a good amount of all stats and willpower. And I've put some rubies on there to increase the overpower damage further. So all in all, we are running as top of the line as my build can really get, you know, without <laughs> having access to, you know, like lots of build defining aspects. Yeah. So from here, we're going to head over to this dungeon, as I mentioned, hopefully this is going to have a boss in it that we can use for comparisons, but we'll see. First things first, we need to head over to Menestad and we just run over straight to that dungeon. I'll chime in when I get there and we're here. So the Forbidden City dungeon rewards you with the Night Howlers aspect, which makes it that the Blood Howl skill increases crit chance and it also affects nearby companions. I won't be using this, but like said, the goal here is to just run a dungeon that has a boss in it and fight that same boss with all of my characters to see which I had the most enjoyment with running through the dungeon. Let's see what we got. So the more eagle-eyed of you will, I'm sure, probably notice that Upon entering this dungeon, I have a lot more experience than I had when I was outside of the dungeon. And the reason for that, this isn't my first time coming in here. My first attempt, I got all the way to the boss and then I lost internet connection. Now, this is, I am recording this on the weekend when there were a lot where that DDoS attack was happening and you know, lots of people were having connectivity issues with the game. But that wasn't what happened in this case. <laughs> like this one was actually a client side failure. Like it was a, you know, I don't know if it's my router. I don't know if it's, you know, the access point in my area. I'm not sure what happened. All I know is that I lost internet. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't the game that, you know, that had the issue. But, you know, because I got all the way to the end of the dungeon, that's why I have, you know, almost a full, <laughs> almost a full experience bar. Although, and maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but I kind of feel like when I, before I switched to World Tier 2, I was almost at level 40. And then when I switched to World Tier 2, all of a sudden I was like two or three bars in. I don't know if like switching world tier does something to your experience. Like I know it's supposed to affect the amount of experience you get when killing enemies, but I don't know if like it actually affects the amount of experience you have. Cause I mean, like, I guess like I'll see when I, when I rewatch this on YouTube, but like, I think that I somehow lost like a full level when I switched, uh, when I changed world tier, world tiers. <laughs> yeah. But the, 
objective here is to slay enraged spirits, so I'm going to go start taking care of the objective and now chime in as I make progress. Night's penitent have fallen. I hid and listened to the screams as they were torn and devoured by the creatures. I didn't want to end up like the others, with nothing but the blood splatter on the floor. The city walls that kept us safe have trapped us in with them. I pray the cathedral sends reinforcements soon and will have mercy on the people of my cowardice. The sounds have stopped. I need more spirit. Got to chime in here. The uh, first enraged spirit, not really a problem. The second set, big issue. I guess uh, when two of those <laughs> happen to spawn with uh, the lightning charge mod on them, they can just one shot you. Much better this time. Yeah. <laughs> 
I forgot to chime in. Uh, so now we have to kill all the enemies in here in order to unlock the door. Alright, our enemy's down, so let's go fight the boss. Let's <laughs> go. 
We have access to the Night Howlers aspect now. Now we've seen what my druid can do. So next we'll be checking out this chicken encounter with an Echomancer. After that, we'll do my Sorcerer. So as I've mentioned, they're gonna I'm I'm really all about the setup. And all of my I mean all of my builds are really like all about setup, but like uh like this is so this has two variations that I can kind of lean into. Like the other, I haven't tried it yet. Like I have access to this aspect called the Changeling's Debt. And with that one, like I can essentially replace Grizzly Rage with Rabies. And add, like I can kind of like compile that on top of my, like my big pulverizers. Basically what I would do... Although I don't actually know if I mean, because considering that, considering that provocation affects the full duration of hurricane and cataclysm, it also works for tornado. But considering that it works for those, I wonder if it also works for rabies and oh, it also works for the ravens. Uh, the ravens active. Wonder if it also works for. The poison creeper poison damage. Again, like, you know, the poison creeper poison damage and the rabies poison damage. Yeah, because the poison creeper poison damage has a 20 second cooldown, but it's at 90%. And rabies has a 11 second cooldown. Well, about a 12 second cooldown with a 53% poison damage. Yeah. And I get, like, either way, like, it's worth testing that eventually. But because like you know that is something I'm interested in trying, like uh again, I very much enjoy this build like that I have set up here. Like my I'm I'm weighing my druid pretty high right now. I'm gonna go empty out my inventory, pair and you know, make any repairs I need. And then next time we'll be checking out my necromancer test against that same boss. So as always, if you enjoy listening to this old man talk about RPGs and if you liked watching this build test, then I appreciate doing all YouTube stuff. Like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, they Victus, Bayer Zunumeris, and bye.